A very good morning to all. Looking at important headlines from the Hindu newspaper for 12th December. On the front page you have, after a heated debate, Rajya Sabha clears citizenship bill. So, AIADMK, Janta Dal United and BJD played a key role in helping push the bill through. And BJP has been successful in cutting the citizen controversial citizenship amendment bill 2019 being passed in Rajya Sabha as well with 125 votes in favor and 99 against. An army has been deployed in Assam, Tripura as violence spreads there. So we have already discussed about this bill in detail quite often. You should be knowing about it. So both the houses have passed the bill now. And this is 2002 riots. Modi gets clean check from Nanavati Mehta panel. So report has been tabled in Gujarat Assembly five years after submission. So Nanavati Mehta Commission had submitted its report five years ago and now it has been tabled in Gujarat Legislative Assembly. So it has given a clean check to Prime Minister Narendra Modi in the 2002 Gujarat riots case. And this is put all courts on high alert in Jammu and Kashmir Ladakh demands judges. So the Chief Justice of uh, Jammu and Kashmir uh, High Court as such has asked that upgradation of security should take place of all courts in wake of threats coming from militants and strike called by lawyers. So Chief Justice of Jammu and Kashmir High Court warns CRP of security for courts. And this is ex-Supreme Court judge to probe killings in Telangana. So, Supreme Court has said it intends to appoint a retired judge to inquire into the extrajudicial killing of four men accused of rape and murder in the veterinarian case in Hyderabad. So, the NHRC also said that it would investigate the matter and Supreme Court has also now stated that an ex-Supreme Court judge would be appointed to inquire into this killing. And below you have 50th PSLV launch carries radar satellite. So, India's PSLV, Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, has marked its Golden Jubilee launch. Means it is the 50th launch through PSLV and it has injected India's advanced radar imaging satellite, Resat 2B RI, and nine other customer satellites from Japan, Italy, Israel, and US into intended orbits. This is. Resat, you can see Resat to BRI will be used for agriculture, forestry, disaster management, support and national security. So also next version of Resat will be launched in the next two months. We had discussed this earlier in news how uh, ISRO plans to launch two Resat satellites in this year itself. Okay. So this is in next two months now. PSLV is said to be the most successful launch vehicle of ISRO, PSLV has failed only twice. The first flight, the maiden flight of PSLV D1 in September 1993 had failed and PSLV C39 in August 2017 had failed. Otherwise, it has had all successful launches. ISRO in 26 years achieved 50 launches. On page 4, you have register new vehicle when owner shows proof of disposal of old one. So, Parliamentary Panel has made recommendations in its report and has been tabled now. So, here you can see this is the proposal that uh, new vehicles should be registered only when owner produces proof of disposal of old vehicle and availability of parking space. So, this is Parliamentary Panel on Home Affairs which is headed by Congress leader Anand Sharma which has made this recommendation in its report which is titled The Management of Worsening Traffic Situation in Delhi. So, it has been tabled in the Parliament now. On page 7, you have Richard Branson to meet Uddhav to seek clarity on Mumbai Pune hyperloop. So, this is Virgin Group founder who has said he needs to see if new government in Maharashtra is as keen on project as old one. So, this is regarding the project called Hyper One Hyperloop One. So, this will connect Pune and Mumbai. So, this is Virgin Atlantic Airline which has uh, Hyperloop technology been initiated. The project first mooted by a previous government's rule. It is estimated to cost $10 billion. It is also said the entire cost of the project will be borne by the private sector and will not depend on funding from government. So, this is Hyperloop, a new technology wherein vacuum is used to transport people and cargo at a very high speed. So, technology is yet to be commercially launched. And Pune Mumbai Hyperloop project would be one of the first few projects globally. 
So it's a hyperloop vehicle which accelerates through electric propulsion and floats above the track using magnetic levitation to reach the destination. So it can be very high speeds. On page 8 you have Andhra Pradesh cabinet clears Disha bill to give to ensure rape verdicts in 21 days. So state government of Andhra Pradesh has passed this bill in the present legislative assembly session. So this paves the way for awarding death penalty for offenses of rape and gang rape and expediting the verdict in trials of such cases to 21 days. On page 9 you have heavy metals contaminating India's rivers. So samples from 65% of testing sites have been found to be unsafe in this survey and they exceed the safe limits set by Bureau of Indian Standards. So this is exercise conducted by Central Water Commission from May 2014 to April 2018. And here you can see the, uh, the contents like chromium, lead, iron exceed in various rivers across the country. And this is Vishwabharati University set to shift its weekend. So this is regarding Vishwabharati University which was started by Rabindranath Tagore in 1921. So it has weekend as Wednesday, Thursday and it plans to shift it to Saturday, Sunday from 2020 onwards. So this it will be completing 100 years too. On the editorial page, the first editorial is strength in numbers. So this is regarding the collegium system which is flawed but uh, it is no reason to hold back appointments to the judiciary because of this. So appointments not being made in the judiciary in high courts there are you know, 50 percent vacancies are there in high courts so this is a cause of concern and this was a front page news yesterday and this is editorial on that and this is staggering speed spread so this is regarding uh, vaccination importance of vaccination so this editorial says that governments must do more to increase public awareness of vaccine importance so, measles cases globally have increased as such and 2002 to 2018, the measles cases declined by 59% but there has been a spike in 2016. So, the overall there has been a decline but an increase in 2016. So, steps need to be taken for this and you know, the countries in 2018, it was seen, the countries which accounted for 45% of all reported cases, which does not include India, are these. So, vaccine hesitancy has been a cause of concern globally. In Democratic Republic of Congo, there is low institutional trust, misinformation, vaccine shortage and even attacks on healthcare centers and workers leading to spread of both measles and Ebola. So, steps need to be taken. Philippines uh, serves as a textbook case of sudden emergence in vaccine hesitancy. So, mass immunization using a newly approved dengue vaccine in Philippines before the risk associated with the vaccine were reported by the manufacturer shattered public trust in vaccines. So, low vaccine coverage led to measles and polio outbreaks. So, steps need to be taken to increase public awareness of vaccine importance. And this is the Delhi dogma fallacy of the right. So, this is uh, here you can see. Uh, uh, Excellent Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar on November 14, uh, you know, he has given a lecture and in which he spoke on various aspects of Indian foreign policy. So, you can see, he, 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 in this speech, Excellent Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar is a former uh, uh, civil servant. He made a strong pitch to practitioners and analysts to, to think beyond the Delhi dogma. That has traditionally defined and constrained, according to him, the pursuit of India's foreign policy. So, so this Delhi dogma fallacy uh, of the right, as such, is uh, you know, critiquing history from the luxury of the present. So, history, uh, as such, is considered uh, as you know a, a drag on it. So, but present is because of history. So, this Delhi dogma fallacy of the right wing is highlighted here. And this is not so bright idea of selling the family silver. So, this is regarding how privatization is taking place, how the disinvestment is taking place. The profitable Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited has been disinvested now. So, it's like selling the family silver. 
So what has been there for long and now it's so sell off. It will be one time sell off. Government would get in the money and there'll be nothing more. So this article says that government may not be striking pay dirt in privatizing public sector undertakings, especially the profitable BPCA. Then on OPED page, here you have an article on politics of everyday life, how everyday life abysmal conditions need to be changed. And this is testing judicial reforms. So this is regarding uh, in Indian judiciary, experimental research is necessary to deal with issues such as high pendency rate. So one important problem is, of course, we have seen regarding vacancies in high courts and also further research requires to deal with this issue and judicial reforms should be brought in. So there you can see increasing number of judges is one point, but at least present strength should be full and then further increase in uh, number of judges also can come forth. And this is a law not based on religion. So refugees fleeing civil violence in Pakistan were exempted from the 1950 immigrants expulsion law. So in 1950, a law was enacted by Jawaharlal Nehru government to expel illegal migrants from Assam. But this was not applicable to minorities from East Pakistan. So, we, uh, so this is the claim being made by National General Secretary of BJP that citizen amendment bill is similar to the 1950 law. So here you can see, but then there was no explicit mention of religion in that law. This is important. Then on page 12, you have opposition protests against pending GST dues to states. So GST dues are pending. Compensation amounting to 50,000 crore has not been paid by the center to the states since August 2019. And this is data protection bill referred to joint panel. So the data protection bill 2019 is gone to a joint select committee of both houses of parliament. So this is important. We have discussed about the bill earlier. And this is new social security bill tabled in Lok Sabha. So this gives option to lower provident fund contribution to. So it amends the cons and consolidates laws relating to social security of employees, subsuming eight central laws, labor related laws on uh, provident funds as such and other social security instruments. And this is Lok Sabha passes bill to set up unified authority for financial services. So this is International Financial Services Center's Authority Bill 2019, which provides for establishment of an authority to develop and regulate financial service market. It's called IFSC. So an International Financial Service Center provides jurisdiction for carrying out international financial services domestically. And first IFSC set in India was in Gujarat, the gift city, city as such. Gujarat International Financial Tech City in Gandhinagar. And the finance minister says there is no limit on the number of IFSCs that can be set up. And this is bill in Lok Sabha on welfare of elders, parents. So this is a bill which has been introduced in Lok Sabha, Maintenance and Welfare of Parents, Senior Citizens Amendment Bill 2019. So it seeks to amend the original act and impose six months imprisonment or fine of 10,000 or both on those who abuse parents, in-laws or senior citizens under their care. Then below you have, this is Shah Faisal, former IAS officer and now a politician in Jammu and Kashmir who has been detained there. He says, who can recreate Constituent Assembly of Jammu and Kashmir? So Supreme Court has asked, uh, asked Shah Faisal that who is the present day competent authority to bring the extinct Constituent Assembly of Jammu and Kashmir back to life. So one of the five judges on the Supreme Court uh, as such has uh, asked Jammu and Kashmir leader Shah Faisal on this issue. So it does not exist. It can't make recommendations. So there should be a constituent assembly which should exist to make recommendations. So this is in the context that the case is that recommendation to abrogate special status of Jammu and Kashmir has to emanate from constituent assembly. You know? So this, this constituent assembly ceased to exist in 1957 with the coming into being of Jammu and Kashmir constitution. So before its resolution, it did not take a decision in favor of abrogation of Article 370. So now how will that decision be taken by it? So on this uh, petition which has been filed, Supreme Court is raising these questions. 
Then on international page here, you have uh, this coverage on elections in UK. So conservatives, Labour's and Liberal Democrats are main political parties here. And, okay. and this is regarding Suki. We have been discussing it almost daily now. She is uh, pre in present before International Court of Justice the, representing Myanmar. And here she has denied allegations of genocide by Myanmar against Rohingya Muslims in, in uh, Rakhine state. And this is Bougainville votes to become world's newest country. So 98% of voters back independence from Papua New Guinea and Bougainville will become an independent country now. So they want to become an independent country. So, and this is China tight-lived on naval exercise in Indian Ocean. So Chinese Foreign Ministry has declined to confirm that China was participating in a joint military exercise with Iran and Russia in the Indian Ocean region. So, but there is this exercise which will take place. This is coverage on that. Then here you have, this is uh, uh, a coverage at how journalists are jailed across the world and largest number are from China. So China is biggest jailer of journalists. And this is Pakistan court indicts Hafiz Saeed on terror financing charges. So an anti-terrorism court has indicted uh, Jamaat Dawa chief Hafiz Saeed on terror financing charges. So FIR was filed against him and the case was registered and the court has indicted him. He is allegedly the mastermind of 2008 Mumbai terror attacks that killed 166 people. And US government has a bounty on his head worth $10 million. On business page, you have nod to ring fence successful IBC suitors. So this is regarding Insolvency and Bankruptcy Court 2016. So Union Cabinet has approved the proposal to make amendments to Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code through the Second Amendment Bill 2019. So it will protect uh, uh, suitors as such, you know, uh, from means file suits here from ex-promoters offenses. And credit credit guarantee scheme is also proposed to be tweet so this is there so also this is another bill on partial credit guarantee scheme for the purchase of high rated pooled assets from financially sound nbfcs and housing finance companies by public sector banks so this has also been tweet. so this is another bill so that is it these are the important headlines for last page as sports related news. For detailed coverage of current affairs, you can visit our website asr.com. Thank you.